It's felt like pushing a rock up a mountain, you know, why are we doing this? Two leaves and a bud is the bit that we pick. The smell is amazing. Four seconds and give it a jostle. Let me tell you, it is backbreaking work. Just by carrying on, carrying on, carrying on, you can achieve unimaginable, really. I'm here on Dartmoor, which is in the southwest county of Devon. And Devon, as you know, it's famous for its stark moorland scenery, beautiful beaches, cliffs. And don't forget the band Coldplay. But today, I'm not here for any of these things. Rather, I'm here to see what most people don't even know exists in the UK, let alone Devon. And that is a fully functioning tea plantation. So we're here at Dartmoor Estate Tea Plantation in Ashburton down in Devon. And can't wait to explore this beautiful plantation. We're going in now to meet Joe and Catherine Harper, the owners and tea makers. Hi! Oh, what a glorious morning! <laughs> With me to meet Joe and Catherine and to find out how tea grows in the UK, I brought some of my best friends, Ying, Rain, and of course, Rainstock Ash. Come on, Come on let's go. After you. Oh. How beautiful. In the middle of rolling hills. Dartmoor Tea Estate sits on six acres of land, an altitude of 620 meters. Much lower and different climatically to the traditional tea growing locations we normally think of. And while tea is highly coveted by the Brits, no one thought until recently of growing tea on these shores. This is our first tea plantation, Tea Garden One. Wow. And uh, how many plants are here? So we've got a thousand plants just in this, in these two fields here. This is where it all began. Fabulous. And you've just expanded as you've been more successful with growing these yeah, teas. Yeah, as we started to get sort of addicted to tea planting. <laughs> so what was it that made Joe and Catherine want to take this on? Well, it was Joe's idea. We had the land, we knew we needed to do something with it. So he thought we'll try an experimental crop. We were really looking for something that we could do sort of experimentally as a bit of a project. Almost maybe as a, I wonder what, I wonder if. We, we picked on tea really, and we thought we will try different varieties, see what we can do, and, and see where we go from that. And boy, has it been a journey. Five years and 10,000 plants later, they achieved what they set out to do and have a beautiful product, which we will taste later. Surprisingly, perhaps, they're not the first to have done this. Between 2014 and 2017, there seemed to be a few like-minded people around the country that just started to think about growing tea. And so there's a handful of growers in the country. I'm sure there are going to be more. I grew up in Kent when the very first vineyards were being established. People were laughing at them. It's a multi-million pound industry now. I don't know whether it's going to be like that for, for tea growing and tea production in 40 years time in the UK, but if it's ever going to be, then we're going to be part of that. I wanted to see their process from start to finish and get an insight into their ways of working. So we headed to the fields and started picking. When picking tea, two leaves and a bud, the fresh new growth is the bit that we pick. Just try and bend it 90 degrees and pick it up and it should make a nice sort of snapping sound. It's the soft, fresh new growth that contains all the compounds and plant chemicals that we're looking for. So Joe, what kind of cultivars do you have in this garden? Uh, well, we've got a real mix in this garden um, from all that we've gathered from all over the world, but um, a lot come from Georgia and Nepal, although we've got some more straight Chinese varieties that, that are also producing some great tea. And what makes the location of your garden so special? Because terroir is everything. You know, whether it's special or whether it's just it is what it is, we're on the edge of Dartmoor, soil that is 
just slightly acidic you know probably on just on the right side of acidic for the for tea to grow here it makes it means the tea grows fairly slowly we don't have the same levels of ultraviolet light as as you do obviously when you get nearer the equator it takes a long time to wither the tea here everything it takes it takes its time and i think that probably is one of the signatures for for a slow growth slow processing how yeah. about the uk weather how are the plants coping and is it conducive to grow tea they could do with a bit more rain than we've got um, so we, we give supplementary irrigation. The rain? The yeah. UK has yeah. so much rain. Yeah, we could probably do with twice the amount of rain. Wow, that's um, amazing. Yeah. Even for a tea professional, this surprises me. You would have thought the wet weather in the UK would be a selling point, but apparently not wet enough. How, how could we imagine that with 5,000 years of back history of tea making, that somebody who's a few years into growing tea and never made a tea before doesn't actually really understand tea in its widest sense how could we hope to produce a tea but somehow somehow it seems to to be working you know so for that we are ever so grateful to the plant really it felt like pushing a, a rock up a mountain you know why are we doing this all i can say is that just by carrying on carrying on carrying on small steps you know a lot of effort you can achieve a sort of unimaginable really I think lots of people can learn from that because you, A, you can do anything you put your mind to, but at the same time, it's just taking one step at the time, not having massive expectations, yeah. and just doing the best you can at every stage. Right, so now we've got a basket full of fresh leaves. What's next? Once we've gathered enough for us to make into some batches of tea, we're going to make some green tea today. So we'll take the leaf from the field, from the tea garden, up into the tea house. We'll weigh it. We'll let it rest after coming straight out of the plantation. This resting process involves spreading the tea leaves out on a traditional bamboo wither rack and leaving them to wither for several hours. The smell is amazing. Mm, so fresh and green. So we've now let the teas rest for about two hours. Joe, tell me, what are we going to do next? Well, this is the fun bit now because um, we're going to make a green tea and we've got to get it ready to start to go through what is known as the kill green stage, the fixation. So that's the, the key difference between uh, how we make and transform this into a green tea. So we're going to do three separate batches. One, we're going to wok fire it. The other, we're going to steam it. And the third, we're going to steam it and then we're going to walk fire it. How exciting, I can't wait. So, on to the fixing stage and into the kitchen. First up, Ying, who will be using a wok to fix the first batch. Okay, Ying, if you use the thermometer there, you can just see what kind of temperature it's, it's got. Yeah, it's much hotter in the middle. Yeah. And it's much cooler around the edges. We're going to put the tea into the centre. The moment that it goes in, it'll start to cook. And we don't really want it to cook. We just want it to get to about, you know, a couple of hundred degrees uh, for about four minutes. So Ying has had a go. She did the wok fired method. I'm going to do the steaming method, which I can't wait. My first step was to put the freshly picked withered leaves into the steamer. Place on top of the steaming wok and leave for 40 seconds. Followed by a 20 second shake, followed by another 40 seconds on the wok. Four seconds okay. and... Okay. Yep, give it a jostle. Okay. Just and like maybe this? maybe turn it up upside down. Okay, yep, will yep, it, yep. will it? Yep. Can, can I? hold it. And then shake it around, whichever way you mm. like, whatever your style is. And when you feel ready, Beautiful smells coming yeah. through. Next up, Rain, who both steam and wok fired her batch. You know, it's such a, a, a multi-sensory sort of thing from the sound through to the smell, um, the feel, and almost already my mouth is watering with the tea that we're going to be drinking from this. Then we were all done and on to the next phase. Steam done. Stage four, rolling. Joe instructed us to empty our leaves onto the cotton fabric, fold it up, twist it tight, and literally start rolling it on a hard surface. And just sort of roll it around, um, and you'll get sort of develop a sort of a circular motion. So let's see, Bernie, how you're getting on. It's sounding good, yours, sounding Bernie, good. already. So yeah, that's that's looking great. How do you know so, when it's done? What's the end stage? Uh, well, it'll look like sort of um, um, fine vermicelli, really. Uh, like rubber so, bands. Yeah, rubber bands. 
The next time you drink a cup of tea, if you've ever rolled tea yourself, you'll appreciate that cup so much. Because let me tell you, it is backbreaking work. We're supposed to do it for an hour, according to Joe. We've done it for 20 minutes. And uh, it's, it's hard work, but it's indeed really satisfying. But come and have a look what it looks like now. So we've painstakingly been rolling and it looks like this beautiful green ball of rubber bands that is just feels really, really sticky. And um, what I'm trying to do now is to just make sure that all the leaves are separated and they mingle with, e with each other without sticking together. I can tell you the ar aromas are absolutely fantastic and I can't wait to see the final product. It is quite hard work, but um, something about it is kind of also like, you know, taking out <laughs> your anger as well. Oh, wow. So it's quite terrible. It will translate in into the tea, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't oh, want any bad juju <laughs> yeah. in our teas, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay, so these are the three teas that we've done together. This one has been steamed, this one wok fired and steamed, and this one wok fired. So now we're going to go to the next process, which is drying, isn't it? Yeah. Each of us collected our leaves and took it inside for stage five, drying, which was essentially spreading the tea leaves out evenly over the drying rack so each of them has enough exposure to the air. Leave them in the open air for about 30 minutes before setting them in the oven to finish the drying process. For the final stage of drying, the teas go into a special oven at 65 degrees for four hours. So we didn't actually get a chance to try the teas that we had made that day, but what we did try was three teas that Joe and Catherine had made previously with the same method. So I could taste for myself the flavour profile generated by using those three different methods. You'll be able to see that in an upcoming video. But for now, what an experience it has been spending a day at Dartmoor Estate Tea using millennia-old techniques of hand-making tea. Not in China, not in Japan, but in an unassuming place in the southwest of England.